Hey there and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete and after a short vacation break, today we complete another episode of our RimWorld Ice Sheet Survival Series. In the last episode we did a lot of trading and as a result of that Cambia is now pretty well equipped, so today we'll try and focus a bit more on projects in and around the base. To start us off, there was a good comment on the last episode, suggesting that we put the hoopstone ring inside of the base. And I think that's not a bad idea, now Cambia doesn't have to walk as far if he needs some joy. For tonight, however, he is content with meditation, and soon after we can see him head off to bed. At this point, I also want to quickly mention the thrombos. Those appeared near the end of the last episode, and we now currently have two of them on the map. And this was also a question last episode, and I was happy to see most of you in favor of playing it safe, so even though Cambia is moderately well equipped at this point, we are not going to risk anything in an attempt to hunt, and instead we'll just leave the two animals be. The next morning then, while Cambia is having breakfast, trading seems to continue, an exotic goods trader is passing by, and of course we will see what they have available. Alright, we are going to spend a bit of money here, 1800 silver to be exact, and we'll do so in order to purchase a social neurotrainer max serum. This serum is a single-use item, which upon use gives you 50,000 experience points towards a particular skill, in this case that would be the social skill. Now 50,000 experience points, that sounds like a lot, but for Cambia it will sadly be reduced to only one third of that, since Cambia has no passion in the social skill. Still, social is currently one of the skills that Cambia has almost no experience in, and so the experience gained here will bump that skill up quite significantly. As a matter of fact, after using the item, Cambia's social skill is now up to level 5. And even though Cambia is currently not interacting a lot, that's actually not a bad thing. A better social skill directly influences trade prices in our favor, and that also increases the chance of successful social interaction. And especially that last point could come into play soon, because we have a bet to spare at the moment, and if someone happens to pass by who would fit into our colony, we could very well have Cambia start the recruiting efforts. So all in all, I think it's 1,800 silver well spent. I also think this actually just reduced our colony wealth, which is of course also not a bad thing on Randy Random Extreme difficulty, since colony wealth directly impacts the strength of raids. So with his social skill increased, Cambia will now continue with research. He has a big project in the works at the moment, as Cambia is currently researching geothermal power. Once that project is finished, we will be able to build a geothermal power generator, which we can put down directly on top of the steam geyser in front of a base, where it will then produce a constant supply of energy, day and night, no matter the outside circumstances. And for the rest of the day, research is actually all that Cambia does, and so we rejoin Cambia around noon of the next day, where after a few more long hours at the research bench, he has now finally completed the geothermal power research project. Now, we're not going to start building a generator immediately. For the time being, our solar panels and wind turbines do the job just fine, and we also definitely lack the steel and the components to actually build one anyway. So instead, we'll have Cambia do a bit of much-needed cleanup around the base, and afterwards he can take care of the muffalo, which is once again ready to be milked. Once that is taken care of, we'll then send Cambia out mining. With 158 steel, our reserves are not looking too bad, but I have a few plants down the line and for that we need significantly more. One of those plants includes upgrading our base defenses, especially the traps, but once we eventually get around to building the geothermal power generator, we'll need a lot of steel for that as well. Luckily, the steel deposit here happens to be quite large, and I think over the course of the next few days, Cambia can mine it out in its entirety. While he's on his way back to the mining site after a quick snack, we then have the opportunity for peace talks, but I think I talked about this already in one of the earlier episodes, I don't really want to make peace, especially not with the tribal factions. Their raids, as rare as they are, are normally pretty easily taken care of, and to make up for their lack of modern weapons, they always tend to send a lot of attackers, which for a cannibal such as Cambia might not be the worst thing in the world. So for that reason, I think we'll just let the opportunity slide here. Also, despite his recent increase in the social skill, Cambia is probably still not a good negotiator, so we might actually mess up and hurt the relationship even further. The next morning then, Cambia returns to mining again, but not for long. As Cambia is hauling some steel back to the base, we have a raid coming in, and this time it's a big one. That's exactly what I talked about just a few moments ago, a large tribal raid consisting of 10 attackers. Now, there is one thing we need to keep in mind here, because we do not need to kill all 10 of them. 
In order to cause the attackers to flee, we'll only need to eliminate half of the group, and with a high-quality charge rifle, three gun turrets, and a couple of traps, that should be manageable. So first things first, we'll quickly have Cambia switch on the turrets, and then, for the time being, he can continue mining. The attackers have spawned at the opposite end of the map, and they actually haven't started their attack yet, so we still have a bit of time, and we might as well spend that doing something productive. A few moments later though, the group of aggressors gets going, and so we prepare for combat. Now we have to be a bit careful here, because some of the attackers here are wielding bows. And all of the bows in the game actually have a higher range than our charge rifle, so our attackers definitely have an advantage in that regard, even though our rifle is of course the more powerful weapon. So even though I was thinking about it, we're not going to engage in a shootout here, instead we'll just run into cover and prepare a small ambush. Alright, that just allowed us to get at least one burst of shots in, but with the bulk of the group approaching, I think it is now best to get behind our line of defenses. The deadfall traps then do their job, four enemies already down or dead, as the group exits our small corridor on the other side. And with a charge rifle and three turrets, we have the welcoming committee ready, and so it doesn't take long until the next enemy is killed, which immediately prompts the retreat. However, when not done yet, we have a chance to get a bit more human meat here. I think Cambia is more than ready for a feast, and so let's try and hunt down whoever we can. By the way, the downed enemy here, we would be able to take this one prisoner, but the stats don't really impress me all that much, so I have no plans of recruiting her. In his pursuit, Cambia is then successful, one more enemy goes down while the rest are fleeing, and for the other four we'll very likely not be able to catch up, so we'll end the fight right here, a decisive victory for Cambia, who can now start taking care of the repair and cleanup process. With a corpse over Cambia's shoulder, we then once again have a trader incoming, this time it's a bulk goods trader, so let's once again see what they have to offer. Alright, we are once again spending a good amount of money here, because we are going to buy Cambia two huskies. Now, there are several reasons for that. Number one, we can buy both a male and a female one here, which could potentially lead to offspring. Number two, huskies are very comfortable with the low temperatures out here on the ice sheet, even though we will have to install a heater during winter. And number three, and this is probably the most important one, they have an advanced trainable intelligence, meaning we can train them to actually haul stuff. And since a large portion of Cambia's day-to-day -day activities consists of hauling, that could be a huge relief. Last but not least, they're able to eat everything, including raw meat, which will very likely make them a bit easier to feed than the buffalo. Now we're also going to sell a bit of stuff here, including all the dead men's clothing, as well as 215 units of human leather. We will still have more than enough left, and with the corpses we just made from the raid, we're also about to produce a bit more in the future. With the stuff we just sold, we now have to pay roughly 500 silver for the two huskies, which I think is a fair price. And here they are, two young huskies, they're hopefully going to be a couple soon, and who knows, maybe the two will turn into three in the near future. For now, we'll have to make sure the huskies are taken care of, and down the line we will definitely build them a small shelter. For now though, we'll just put an animal area right in front of the base. They will also get a small stockpile here where Cambia can bring them some meat, and we will also set up the training already. The priority here is to make them competent haulers as quickly as possible, and for that we'll have to first train them in obedience and then in hauling. That will take a while, but luckily huskies are not the most complicated animals to train, and so even Cambia with his rather low animal handling skill should be able to succeed. Two animal sleeping spots then go right next to the door, and with that we are ready to continue. The rest of the day then proceeds without any major incidents. In the evening then we have Cambia flick another switch near the battery, which will now allow our power generators to recharge the battery. The three turrets have drawn a good amount of power during the short time they were active, so let's now use the quiet of the night to bring the battery back up to full charge. 
In the early morning hours, then a tornado spoils us with its presence. Luckily though, it is far away near the northern edge of the map and also quickly disappears over the mountains. Just a few hours after that, while Cambia is already busy doing cleanup, we once again get a small natural disaster. This time it's a flash storm striking the ice sheet, but once again Cambia gets lucky here, as the storm fortunately strikes down on the other side of the mountain. Apart from those two acts of nature, this day also passes by pretty uneventful. At least for the moment, Cambia still has to do all of the hauling himself, and so he spends the majority of the day hauling corpses and equipment, as well as rearming traps. The next morning then starts with a round of muffalo milking, before Cambia can then haul back the ambrosia that one of the attackers dropped. Ambrosia is a mood-enhancing drug in the form of a soft fruit, which gives a small plus 5 mood buff, as well as a 50% increase to joy. It is slightly addictive, but only has an addiction chance of 1%, so using it doesn't really come with that big of a risk. However, we will still not have Cambia do that. The benefits of using Ambrosia are really not that noticeable. We have been doing a good job of keeping Cambia's mood in check, and especially his need for joy is barely a problem at this point. And since we only have 4 units of Ambrosia here, we might as well sell them to the next trader. Who knows when we need to make our next big purchase. And with that, we now actually have the remains of the raid cleaned up, and so Cambia can now go back to what he was doing before, which is mining out the steel deposit to the north of his base. A few hours later, our steel reserves are now up to 518, and that should do just fine for one or two larger upcoming projects. The battery for the turrets is also fully charged again, so we can switch the power supply back off, and then we can watch Cambia during his first husky training attempt. Once again, we cannot start by immediately training them to haul. We have to train obedience first, which luckily only requires one successful attempt. On this first try though, Cambia remains unsuccessful with both animals, and he now has to wait for a while until he can try again. So he can now use the spare time to clean up the blood of his enemies, which is currently causing a pretty hefty mood debuff every time Cambia walks through the trapped area. Early in the next morning then, nature is once again troubling us, this time with a solar flare that shuts down all of our electrical equipment. Right now though, we're not really depending on anything though, as Cambia once again starts his day out with the animals in a second attempt to train the huskies. Once again though, he fails his attempt, and so it is now time for food production. Our meat reserves are currently getting lower and lower, and even though we haven't reached critical levels yet, we now have three animals to feed, and that means Cambia should probably switch over to human meat again. After the recent raid, we now have six human corpses in storage, ready to be butchered, and that is exactly what Cambia has on his to-do list today. Half a day later then, the butchering order is complete, the solar flare has also disappeared, and Cambia once again has a healthy supply of human meat to consume. After everything is hauled safely into storage, we then try the whole training thing again, but once again, Cambia remains unsuccessful. After a bit of cleaning in front of the butcher table, Cambia therefore heads off to bed now. The next day will surely once again be full of activities. After breakfast and a bit of hauling, one such activity is then unsurprisingly once again animal training, but sadly, Cambia again fails on both attempts. After having no success with the huskies, things go a bit better with the muffalo. Even though the big animal was suffering from food poisoning earlier, you can still see the remains of that on the floor around it. Cambia is able to gain 12 units of muffalo milk here, and he can also quickly clean up the mess. As you can see, our muffalo is also down to its last few meals, so after hauling the milk back into storage, Cambia will once again start cooking. I specifically saved a good amount of muffalo meat for that, and Cambia will now use that meat to prepare a few simple meals. And in good cannibalistic fashion, those will then be fed to the muffalo. At this point, by the way, I would like to know what do you think about the muffalo going forward? Should we continue to keep it and keep the high food cost that comes with it, or should we be happy for the 200 units of muffalo wool it's produced so far, and instead slaughter it soon to preserve some food for the huskies? Right now, the huskies are definitely the more important animal in my opinion. Their ability to haul could make them extremely valuable, especially as long as we only have one single colonist. While for the muffalo, the milk production is a nice little bonus, but the deciding factor here is actually the wool, which is one of the best materials in the game if you want to make clothing for the ice sheet. 
So let me know what you think. Should we try and continue with three animals and maybe research hydroponics soon? Or should we cut our losses and get rid of the buffalo instead? In the early evening hours then, Cambia once again tries his luck as an animal trainer, and even though, as usual, the first attempt fails, number two is a success. We now have one husky trained to obey its master, and I'm sure we'll be able to do the same for the second one shortly. By the way, the name of the husky we just trained is Scarlet, but I think I would like to rename it for the next episode, and this time with the help of a simple mod I know that will work, so I will pick one name at random from everyone who comments on the video, and if you have an idea for the name then leave that in the comments as well. Should you be the lucky one who's picked, I will take a look at the comment, and if there is a name in there, I will take that name instead. Now, back to the action here, we also just had a war merchant arrive, so we are once again due for some trading. However, it will take the trader and his companions a while to arrive at our base, and so in the meantime, I think we can deconstruct a few mechanoids. We currently have eight mechanoid corpses in storage, so let's fire up the machining table and disassemble them into their bits and pieces. Around midnight then, Cambia takes a break from work. To save some power, I have also flicked off the light in the workbench again, and Cambia can now squeeze in a short nap, while the war merchant and his caravan are slowly arriving. And so after just two hours of sleeping, we'll send Cambia out again, ready to hopefully make another good deal. The first thing we'll do here is to sell the Ambrosia. It doesn't make us a whole lot of money, but it's something, and it also frees up a space in the storage room. We'll also sell all of the bows that we scavenged in the last raid, and as usual, we're also selling all the dead man's clothing. And that's about it, that will make us 193 silver, not a whole lot, but better than nothing. After catching up on some sleep we can then rejoin Cambia around noon, and we can see the second husky has now also successfully learned obedience. This one was the male husky, his name very fittingly Violence, but just like his female companion, that name is going to change in the next episode, as I will now pick not one, but two names from the comments. The remainder of the day is then spent at the machining table, as Cambia disassembles the last few mechanoids, and while we watch him work, we are slowly going to make the cut in today's episode. I have to say, this one was pretty eventful. We had a rare human raid out on the ice sheet, we also successfully researched geothermal power, and, and I think this is the most important one, we now have ourselves two canine companions. Once the two huskies are able to haul, they will definitely be a huge help for Cambia, who can then focus more and more on the more productive tasks, while the huskies will quite literally carry the load. Once again, leave comments down below, both in regards to the buffalo and to the husky naming, and in the next episode we'll then find out how animal life on the ice sheet continues. If you liked this episode, then I would be happy if you could leave a thumbs up, and if you want to support the channel and haven't subscribed already, then go ahead and feel free to do just that. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.